Hi everyone, my name is Ricky Savjani. I'm a resident in radiation oncology at the University of California, Los Angeles. And I'm really excited and happy to share with you today uh, about our study in which we shared radiation dose distribution maps onto PACs to enable radiologists to be able to incorporate a patient's radiation history better into their differential diagnosis as they're reading studies onto PACs. So really the idea came about as I started residency early on and I started to learn that we have a lot of specialized uh, software solutions and packages that we use to plan and deliver radiation for a patient, right? So we have a set of tools that we use to contour on. We have a set of tools that the dosimetrists, the physicists, and ourselves use to plan the radiation dose uh, distributions to. And we have a whole separate different set of tools and software and, and equipment that we use to actually use to deliver the radiation dose maps. And along the way, each of these um, uh, pieces of, of software is, 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 are creating images, but none of these images really get shared into the medical record or into PACs, and really none of our colleagues can, can appreciate them unless they come to our department and really have a detailed discussion with us. But that's really a disservice because there are some images that really summarize very succinctly what we did uh, as for, for the patient in a distinct volumetric 3D view. And that's that key piece of information, actually the radiation dose distribution map, which tells you at every voxel, what was the dose that was planned to be delivered at every voxel for that patient. And we generate this, we, we talk about it in our chart rounds, we use this as our own way of understanding what, was our, our, what we delivered for that patient, but we don't share it with folks unless they come and ask for it. And even then, we often only share 2D snapshots of it, so just a, a single slice or two that shows where the radiation was delivered. So I started to see this as becoming problematic. So I saw radiologists at our tumor boards who would say, hey, my differential, in, in, my differential diagnosis includes a potential for a radiation treatment effect, but I'm not certain when radiation was delivered, and I'm certainly not certain where exactly the extent and the boundaries of the dose distribution were. And that requires us to really talk about it, but even in the tumor board setting, there wasn't a quick and rapid way for us to be able to display those radiation dose tissue maps so that our medical oncology colleagues, our surgical oncology colleagues, and our radiology colleagues are all kind of all sitting together looking at volumetric dose information. And that became a problem. And that's when I thought we need to do a better job of doing this because we can, we generate these images. It's just a matter of sharing them. And the solution to this problem actually is not that difficult. It's not a huge technical innovation. It's really a, a mindset and a workflow change that we had to create to, to adapt and share these radiation dose distribution maps. And so the solution actually required a couple of things that weren't, that, you know, again, were pretty simple. So first, most radiation oncology departments, including our own, have a series of computers throughout the department that are pulling information from PACs. So we're uh, querying PACs and we're retrieving studies from, from the hospital PAC system. So these include things like MR, MRs, PET CT scans, and any other specific diagnostic scans that might have been done outside of our department in the radiology department. We're retrieving those studies so that we can fuse them to our planning studies and we can actually generate uh, fusion maps where we can better contour our, say, our GTVs, our, our tumors, our gross tumor volumes that we want to actually deliver radiation to. So we're pulling all this information in. All we needed to, to be able to do was push the information, that, the, the, the data that we generate back onto PACs. And in order to do that, we just have to talk to the IT department inside the hospital that manages PACs and says, hey, please add our DICOM node as a, a permission so that it can push the uh, information onto PACs. And once that's enabled, we now have the ability to push these information onto PACs and these images in particular, these DICOM images that show the volumetric dose distribution. And then while we enabled that technological piece, we then needed to enable a workflow that responsibly and reproducibly creates these dose distribution maps that are being shared. And, it, and we, in order to do this, we make sure that a patient has completed treatment, that the last fraction has actually been delivered, that radiation dose distribution is finalized, and so we understand that what we're sharing is actually the, what, we, what we plan the radiation to be, and then we share those dose maps. And we share them in a way that it's in, it lives inside the same study that we plan the radiation off of, whether that's the CT simulation scan, or if it's an MR that we fused it on, for example, for a brain metastasis, then we'll put it as an, an additional series on top of that study, so it lives all in the same study in PACs. And that way, a radiologist can pull up side by side 
they can have the original unaltered uh, set of MR images. Let's say it's a T1 post contrast image for a brain tumor, a, brain, a, a metastatic brain tumor. And then side by side, they can look at the same underlying volume, but overlaid on top of it is the radiation dose distribution map. And then they can start incorporating that radiation history into the differential diagnosis for subsequent scans for that patient as they're looking at uh, history of, of scan. And we can also take radiation dose distribution maps that have been done on, let's say, a year ago, and then maybe there's concern for recurrence. We can take those radiation dose distribution maps and fuse them onto the new study and say, what was, what was it, where did the radiation, was it delivered in reference to this new scan? And this can help also determine um, things like post-treatment effect from radiation versus the, you know, edema versus uh, um, actual progression and tumor recurrence. So this is helping um, undo this. And we just can display this in real time in PACS. So even when the radiologist pulls up the study, let's say in tumor board in our, or in our stereotactic radio surgery conference, they can see all this information in real time and everybody gets to see it on the screen at the same time. And that gets incorporated in, into their uh, decision making. And further, you know, it really serves as a point that can serve, that can sit in the medical record that's a much more accessible than what we currently offer. So what we previously offered was we kind of write these 2D uh, snapshots, we put them in a note, and that gets buried inside the clinical notation inside the medical record, inside EPIC. But it's very difficult for a radiologist to retrieve that in real time because they have to look through all the notes and kind of read through all of it when really that volumetric history is there provided. And so it's really analogous to if a patient got an EKG, there's a separate area where an EKG lives for that patient and people can reference it, even if it's a, uh, a different specialist, a nephrologist who might want to take a look at the EKG to see if there's an interaction with one of the drugs they may be prescribing, prescribing. So that information is there and people can start readily incorporating it, particularly our medical oncology colleagues, our surgical oncology colleagues who don't have that information. And I think the what this really enables is a better line of communication between radiation oncology and, and the entire medical community, whether that's radiology, medical oncology, surgical oncology, it now opens up a better communication that they can look at these images, see if there's something that might be altering what they wanna do, whether that's just prescribing chemotherapy or immunotherapy, or whether that's concern for possible re-resection, or whether that's just adding to a differential diagnosis for a radiologist, they now have that information to see it. And so we piloted this for all of our stereotactic radiosurgery cases in the brain and the spine. And these are cases where patients are getting high doses of radiation, um, either to the brain or spine, and they're getting very close follow-up for both monitoring treatment effect and also for monitoring for potential recurrences. And having that dose distribution map plays a critical component. And, and as we started talking with our neuroradiologist, Dr. Solomon at UCLA, I uh, was mentioning that this is changing the way we think about the evolution of brain metastases and of GBMs and, and everything, because now we have the ability to rapidly incorporate radiation dose information into our differential diagnosis. So basically, we put this as a key piece of the history, the radiation history of a patient as part of their medical record. And this has enabled up more uh, channels of communication and more rapid access to what we do in our department. One, one potential downside, and this was commented on um, both in our reviewers and in several discussions we had was that, could somebody take this pieces of, these pieces of information and misinterpret them? Could they look at radiation dose history and look at the effect and say, this is an endemic change, there's nothing required, when in fact, it might be actually more concerning for a, um, uh, you know, a tumor progression? Well, you know, this is possible, but I think what this really opens up is the opportunity for a two-way education, is that if the question arises, we really want people to talk to the treatment physician team, the treating physician team, uh, and, and have an open discussion, say, I have this concern, let's discuss this case and see what we can do optimally for this patient. And similarly, it opens up a, a way for us to learn from our colleagues. So if our rate, neuroradiologist is telling us, hey, you know, we, we're starting to notice that, um, that the tumor progression rates are a little bit higher for this types of patients. Um, this is something we want to take into account and learn from them um, and really have this more open discussion about what's the optimal thing to do for a patient and really not have patients and, and treating physician treatment teams making siloed decisions. And, um, you know, for example, if, if somebody looks at an EKG in the chart and they have a question, 
don't call up cardiology and, and have a discussion about that case. And that's a similar thing we'd, what we'd want is that as we share these radiation dose distribution, distribution maps, if there's a question, please contact us and we're happy to, you know, we may not know the answer, but we can talk through it and think about what's the best uh, optimal care for that patient. And so in that way, you know, this is what our study was all about, was just giving access to what we do, uh, and, and it can be esoteric, but making it more understandable with that single snapshot of a radiation dose distribution map as a patient's radiation history. So we've done a lot of work to put this together and we piloted it. Um, we have, we uh, readily made our software MIM, which is a contouring software, be able to do this. So there's a readme guide on the paper. Feel free to look through that if you're a radiation oncology department and it'll walk you through how to set MIM up to do this. But if your department doesn't use MIM or it doesn't use any particular software, we put together a Git page that talks uh, people and, and radiation oncology departments on how to do this using entirely open source software, things like 3D Slicer and, and open source DICOM tools that you can just push uh, maps directly into packs as long as you've enabled that DICOM node to push the packs. So whatever software tool you might be using, we'll, we have stuff that will help you get started. And if you still need more help, please reach out to us and we're happy to help walk you through it or at least share what we've done and what has worked and what hasn't. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, discussion about radiation dose distribution map. Please check out our paper, our commentary, check out our GitHub page and, and contact us for any questions. And uh, we hope that if you're a radiology department and you want this to, to be enabled, maybe talking with your radiation oncology department at your institution um, to get this set up would be another great way. So thanks very much uh, for listening and have a good day.